Lift off in five, four, three, two, one, zero. And lift off. When you think about an astronaut, what comes to mind? Spacewalking? Maybe that iconic image of them all suited up in the astro van on the ride out to the launch pad? Or those historic videos of them walking on the moon? What you probably don't think about is a swimming pool. But believe it or not, that's our final stop on this virtual tour. Hi, I'm Rachel Power, and today we're gonna to take a look at astronaut training for living and working on the International Space Station. We're here in Mission Control at the Johnson Space Center. This is where much of the communication takes place with astronauts after they've left Earth and until they return home, and that includes when they're on the space station. As the commercial crew program nears its primary objective, launching humans safely to the space station, more and more focus is being placed on making sure those astronauts are ready to fly. We've got a lot to see today. Are you ready? Let's go. Just like a swimming pool isn't what you typically think about when you think astronaut. You probably also don't think about a classroom. But after the application and selection process, these women and men, they're not automatically given the title of astronaut. They have to earn it. So the astronaut candidates, as we call them, have to go through about two years of training before they can be eligible for assignment to a mission. That training includes what we call expeditionary behavior. The things it takes to be a good teammate, like communication, leadership skills, and followership skills. All U.S. astronauts must be proficient in Russian. They're going to learn survival skills. I mean, they have to be able to make split-second decisions in life-or-death situations. And that's why they learn how to fly T-38 jets. They'll also have to learn how to conduct spacewalks. Uh, they'll have to conduct research projects. They're going to control the space station robotic arm and they have to operate the many technical systems on the space station. So as you might have guessed, these candidates, they don't just learn in this classroom. There's lots of hands-on training as well. So let's go take a look. We're now inside Building 9 at the Johnson Space Center, where astronaut training is a major focus. Behind me, you can see full-scale mock-ups of the International Space Station. In fact, over here to my left, you see one of the last existing space shuttle trainers. And peeking up over the top of it on the other side, you can see the very big robotic arm. Behind me is Leonardo, or the PMM, and it is used for cargo and storage. Right down here to my right, you can see the top of the cupola. That's one of the favorite hangout spots on the International Space Station. It gets you a beautiful view of Earth below. And in the forward section of the station, you can see the smaller robotic arm attached to the outside of the Japanese module. But we're gonna to get to go inside Node 2, Harmony, and take a closer look. Welcome to Node 2, or Harmony. Here you'll find the astronaut sleeping quarters, the crew workbench, and if you look behind me, you can see into Destiny, the US laboratory. To your left, you're looking into the European module, Columbus, which focuses on the human research program. And to your right, you can see into GEM, the Japanese module, where there's an airlock to pass large experiments outside into the vacuum of space. Don't forget to look above you and also behind you, where you're going to find two airlocks. These will be used for docking the new commercial crew program spacecraft. An astronaut's time in space is very limited and extremely valuable. So mock-ups like these allow them plenty of time to learn where to find the tools they're going to need to be successful on their mission. It also allows them to simulate and rehearse emergency situations. They need to know what to do and where to go to be safe. Just like you practice safety drills at school. So tools like this are invaluable while they're working inside the station, but what if their work takes them outside the station? Well, we have just the tool for that too. As promised, this is our final stop. Take a look over here. Yes, at its most basic level, this is a swimming pool, but we call it the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, or NBL for short. In a moment, you're gonna find out why. Now, I'm not gonna go with you for this next part, but you are gonna take a dip in the pool. Have fun. Right now, you're witnessing astronaut training in progress. 
The person in the giant white suit is, well, you guessed it, an astronaut. We've discovered that being underwater is a great way to simulate working in space. The movements in both locations are slow going and methodical. You have the ability to move in any direction. And you're able to practice doing full operations in real spacesuits. The suits they wear during spacewalks weigh around 300 pounds. So practicing with them outside the pool is pretty much out of the question. Underwater, those suits have to be airtight to prevent the water from flooding inside. In space, a similar hazard exists. Just like water takes the shape of its container, gas does the same and spreads to fill all the space available. So the gas in a spacesuit needs to stay inside for the astronaut to breathe, so it has to be airtight. You'll also notice that the astronaut is not alone. For safety and support, a team of divers assists each astronaut with relocations, safety concerns, and documenting their work. Those giant structures, you see, they're full-size replicas of the space station. Since any station astronaut could be called on to fix something on the outside, they all practice here underwater many times to be ready for the real thing. Welcome back. Since you've had a chance to see how massive those structures are, you now know why we need a pool this big. The NBL is one of the largest indoor pools in the world. It measures about 200 feet long by 100 feet wide and 40 feet deep. Through the use of VR technology, there's one thing you didn't have to worry about on your dive. Air. Even though you can't see it, every breath you take is a reminder that you're constantly relying on it. And it's one of the reasons why we train in a pool. Just like in space, if you go underwater without oxygen, you can't survive long. In space, astronauts need to wear a pressurized spacesuit in order to survive outside of a spacecraft. One way to think of it is like flying in an airplane. A plane is pressurized just like a spacesuit. So as you fly higher and higher, you have all the oxygen you need to survive. Take a moment to look around you. Over there are the cranes that help astronauts get suited up and into and out of the pool. Up above is the control room where all operations on top of and under the water are managed and monitored. That's right, there are training exercises on top of the water too. One of those is a simulated water landing where crews practice getting astronauts out of the capsule safely. Well, what we've covered here today in just a few minutes, it takes these brilliant women and men years to master, but they're committed to continuing the quest of pioneering beyond Earth. That's it for today, but we'll see you next time as we prepare to launch America. Hi, my name is Steve Stitch. I'm the Deputy Program Manager for the Commercial Crew Program. Thank you for taking our tour.